Do you hear in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the solemn promise and vow that you made or that was made in your name at your baptism, ratifying and confirming the same in your own persons, and acknowledging yourselves bound to believe and do hold those things which you then undertook or your sponsors then undertook for you? Do you promise to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, and that he was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, that he went down into hell, and also did rise again the third day, that he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from then shall come again at the end of the world to judge the quick and the dead? And do you believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life after death? Do you steadfastly purpose by God's help to renounce the devil and all his works, the vain pomp and glory of the world, and all covetous desires of the same, and the sinful desires of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Henceforth, the world without you. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry be Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who has vouchsafed to regenerate these thy servants by water and the Holy Ghost, and has given unto them forgiveness of all their sins, strengthen them, we beseech thee, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost to comfort them, and daily increase in them thy manifold gifts of grace the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of thy holy fear, now and forever. Amen. Send, O Lord, this thy servant, destiny, with thy heavenly grace, that she may continue thine forever, and daily increase in thy Holy Spirit more and more, until she come to thy everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this thy servant, Gabriel, with thy heavenly grace, that he may continue thine forever, and daily increase in thy Holy Spirit more and more, until we come unto thy everlasting kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And yes. Let us pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, who makest us both to will and to do those things which are good and acceptable unto thy divine majesty. We make our humble supplications unto thee for these thy servants, upon whom, after the example of thy holy apostles, we have now laid our hands, to certify them by this sign of thy favor and gracious goodness toward them. Let thy fatherly hand, we beseech thee, ever be over them. Let thy Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of thy word, that in the end they may obtain everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who with thee and the same Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever in one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who showest to those who are in error the light of thy truth, 
to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness. Grant unto all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> I think you as a congregation to please acknowledge your newest members. There we go. You do not have this service in your bulletin. This is a short service of installation for a lay reader. Um, I have to my right a gentleman who you know well. And as we understand and know Nicholas, when Jan and I were able to visit the camp, uh, summer camp, all the way up in northern Pennsylvania, um, I had heard that this young man read the service for the very first time. I was awestruck. <laughs> I can't tell you what the first service I read sounded like, but I was so encouraged. And so I mentioned we should make this young man a lay reader. And so today we're going to make that a reader. Reverend Father and God, I present unto you this person to be admitted to the office licensed lay reader in this diocese. Almighty and merciful God, of whose only gift it cometh that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, look down, we beseech thee, on this thy servant, who is now to be admitted to the office of reader in this church. Pour upon him the abundance of thy grace. Make him modest and humble in his ministration ready to obey those set over them in the Lord, diligent to frame and fashion his own life and the life of his family according to your blessed word. Grant unto him growth in the knowledge and love of your word, that he may faithfully minister to the salvation of souls, to the edification of your church, and to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear beloved, you who are now to be admitted as a reader in the house of God, we call upon you to know the holiness of that office and to fulfill it with all reverence and godly fear. For our God is a mighty God who will pour down upon you his grace that you may go on to perfection. And as you are set in a high place in the church, that your voice may be heard of all men, so ought you to study and strive to be a model of holy living, obedient bearer of the word of God in all godly conversation that God might bestow upon you his heavenly grace. And so, Nicholas, in so far as it lieth in you, do you promise to faithfully execute the duties of the office of reader in the church of God and to be obedient to the clergy and others appointed over you being diligent in the same. I will, the Lord be my helper. Then I, Bishop R. Charles Gillen, by the authority of my own self, the bishop, receive you, and you receive the authority as the reader in the house of God. May God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost rest upon you and upon this work done in his name. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, Holy Father, vouchsafe to bless this thy servant in his office of lay reader, that he may be diligent in the conduct of public worship and
and such other duties as may be assigned. A man in his life to set forth the beauty of the things that he reads and that he may be an example of holiness to your church. Keep him by your grace and purity of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will be liveth and reigneth in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Now continue on page three in the bulletin with the Nicene Creed. It's free Christian to stand and confess our faith together, saying, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and the one of our Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, my Jehovah. The God of 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 and this is the Lord our name and power. And he shall come to the end of the world, he shall have spoken for the end of death. He was seen and shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the Lord of God, who is conceived from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, who is 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 the I am not in the baptism of the Christian and I love the resurrection of the dead. And I offer the world to God. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, St. John's, Ventnor, New Jersey. Good morning. It's good for Jan and I to be with you. I promise we did not bring you this weather. I often think of you folks and just how often you must look at the summer months with some element of dread because of the influx of individuals who come to be in Jersey language at the shore. And that, of course, he is here as well in Ventnor, New Jersey. I can almost guarantee you that no one is here today for a beach day. So you are all safe. What a wonderful day in the life of your parish with the reception of your newest members by the ancient rite of confirmation and also for Nicholas being a, installed as a licensed lay reader here at St. John's. Uh, prior to the service, during the Sunday school hour, um, I will not elaborate this. I will simply just say pray as Father Michael has brought to your attention the need for prayer for a coadjutor at our next council. Pray for Jan and I as we are soon to move to Quarry Hill, Pennsylvania, leaving the state of New Jersey. And also please pray for those dear four folks who are suffering so with the results of this hurricane and uh, all that they have to do with rebuilding those who lost lives, their loved ones, and all of them trying to put their lives back together. I know you are praying. Look, I look forward to being with you in our time of fellowship, which is going to follow after this service. On the front porch of his little country store in Illinois stood a man and his business partner by the name of William Barry. Barry asked this man, how much longer can we keep this going? And he responded, it looks as if our business is just about time out. Then he continued, you know, I wouldn't, so mind, I wouldn't mind so much if I could just do what I really want to do. I want to study law. 
And I wouldn't mind it so much if we could sell everything we have here in this store, pay off our bills, and have a little bit extra, just enough for me to buy the one book I need to move forward to study law and to be an attorney. That book, he said, is called Blackstone's Commentary on English Law. Well, a strange looking wagon was coming up the road at that moment. The driver angled in closer to the front porch of the store then looked at the man and said, I'm trying to move my family out west and we're out of money. I've got a good barrel here that I would be glad to give up to you for 50 cents. Well, the man looked along the wagon. His eyes fell upon the wife looking at him pleadingly with a thin face and somewhat emaciated. He put his hand into his pocket and took out, according to him, the last 50 cents he had. And he said, I reckon I could use a good barrel. All day long, that barrel sat on the front porch of the store. Barry, the business partner, kept chiding him about his purchase. But late in the evening, the man walked out and he looked into the barrel. He saw something at the bottom he hadn't noticed before. His long arms went out, down into the barrel. And as he fumbled around, he hit something solid and heavy. He pulled out a book and stood motionless. It was Blackstone's commentary on English law. Abraham Lincoln would later write, I stood there holding the book and looking up to heaven. There came a deep impression on me that God had something for me to do. And he was showing me now how to get ready for it. Coincidence or appointment? That is the question we're faced with this morning. In our gospel from St. Luke chapter 7, the account opens with a very sad scene that occurred in the city of Nain not too far from a town where our Lord Jesus was raised, Nazareth, also in the region of Galilee. A widow, her only son, had died. It was the woman's darkest hour. She had already buried a husband and never thought that she would have to bury a son as well. One would naturally think that she would outlive him, and now her only source of support protection and lineage were gone, and she would return to an empty residence and most likely live in poverty all the days of her life. The text says that there was a sizable crowd at the funeral. The people of Maine understood that this certainly was a tragic and desperate situation. So as they were exiting the town, the dead being carried on a litter or an open buyer or beer, with a band of mourners and musicians in front and on the way to the gravesite, they met another crowd coming into town. Coincidence or appointment? There are many theories in this world. I can't elaborate on all of them. There are many theories in this world to try to explain why things happen. Some people say that it's a matter of random chance. Let me remind you that chance does nothing. Chance is simply an expression of mathematical odds. And so chance is not responsible for why things happen. Some people say, particularly those coming out of the Enlightenment, and some of our founding fathers were also influenced by deism. That being that God just wound the clock and watches it as it simply goes forward. Then there are others, mostly embraced by the people who are associated with Islam, who feel that the world really is fatalistic. In other words, if it is fated that you recover from your illness, then you will recover whether you call a doctor or not. Likewise, if it's fated that you will not recover, so that you will not do so, 
then it doesn't matter if you call a doctor or not. Therefore, it's futile to call a doctor. The outcome has been fated for you. The scriptural teaching from God's word is very simply that God created, sustains, and controls all things. He ordains the means as well as the ends to fulfill his purposes. Someone has defined providence as this. The hidden, patient enactment of God and his overruling purpose beyond the will of human agents and yet at the same time engaging the wills of human agents. Let me share with you some of these scriptures that hopefully you are familiar with some of, some of them. In Genesis chapter 22 in the Old Testament, You'll recall that Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac when God said suddenly, stop. And then there was a ram in the thicket. And so God provided that sacrifice instead of Isaac. In Genesis chapter 24, Abraham sends his trusted servant to bring back a wife for his son Isaac. The servant prays that God will direct him, and before the prayer is finished, behold, there is Rebecca. In, Pro in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, it says there, the Lord works out everything for his own ends. Proverbs 19, 21, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 23, the apostle Peter preaching said these words, This man was handed over to you, but that, this man is Jesus, by the way, by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on a cross. If I were to ask you to say with me, Romans 8, 28, most of you would be able to say with me, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who have been called by his purpose. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul again wrote, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. My friends, God is in control. It's pretty clear. He ordains everything. Now back to St. Luke chapter 7. As the two crowds met at the town gate, Jesus, the Lord, knows what's happening. He ordained it so, being God. His heart went out to the grieving mother. He was moved with compassion and pity. And he said, do not weep. Can you imagine the silence of the people? What do you mean, do not weep? If ever there was a time to weep, it's certainly now. And no one asked Jesus to do anything. What could possibly be done? The young man was dead, and they were carrying him to his grave or to his tomb. And yet for the Lord of life and death, nothing is ever hopeless. We need to remember that. Friends. We need to remember that when we're perhaps sitting in a doctor's office and receive across that doctor's de desk bad news concerning our health. We need to remember this and keep it in mind when an addicted loved one is in rehab and is not making much progress that we're able to see. We need to keep in mind that God is in control when we don't have a job not due to our fault, we just don't have one, and the bill collectors won't stop contacting us. We need to keep it in mind when a good friend to whom we have been witnessing um, all of a sudden comes to us and says, no, I don't want to hear anymore about this gospel that you bring. And we grieve because we care for and love them so. The, words, the world was brought into order by the spoken word of our Savior. All things were created in and through him. 
says the Apostle Paul to the Colossians. And so when Jesus said to Jairus' dead daughter, my child, get up, she did. When he said to his good friend Lazarus, come forth from the tomb, he did. And when he says to this young man of name, I say to you, get up, he did. His victory over death is immediate and complete, and he has the answer for all of our grief and our pain. Jesus delivered the now living again son to his mother, and the crowd was awestruck. There's surely a prophet among us, they said, but we know more than a prophet, because only God himself can raise the dead, and he himself would be later raised from the dead by his heavenly Father and give a promise to you and to me that all of those who trust in him and his finished work on the cross for us and dying for our sins, that we also will be given the gift of everlasting life. The story is told of a, a man years ago. He was the only survivor of a shipwreck, and he was on an uninhabited island. He had a few things with him, and he was able to put together some kind of little hut and put his possessions in there. Well, he was going out foraging for food, and when he was, he was out just a little bit, and he looked back, and he saw all this smoke. What had happened is that the embers from the fire he had set had somehow blown on his little shack, and it destroyed it. He had been asking God to be rescued again and again, but nothing had happened. And so there he fell down on his face. He was distraught. He didn't know what to do, and he fell asleep. The very next day, a ship came from the distance and approached that uninhabited island in that man. And when his rescuers came to him, he asked them, how was it that you knew I was here? And their answer was very simple. We saw your smoke signal. He didn't send one up. Coincidence or providence to bring something like that to bear, to make it happen. You see, my friends, things don't happen as a result of chance, as a result of a wound clock unwinding or as a result of faith. But we all need to take great comfort in the simple fact that there are no coincidences. There are only appointments ordained by a great God who loves you and me as our Heavenly Father and has promised us good forever. And he said amid all the changes of life, among all the things we might view as coincidences, Trust in me, they're my appointments, and I'm a God of love, and I love you forever. Let's pray together. <coughs> our Lord and our God, we are so thankful to know that we are children of your great care. You hold us in the palm of your hand. You have promised to be with us all our days, yea, even forever. And all your promises are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray for anyone here today who is struggling in any way, struggling with health, struggling with disappointment, struggling with finances in their marriages, perhaps with kids. Lord, there are many ways that we sinners who have been saved by grace can struggle. But Lord, I would just ask that by your Holy Spirit, you would minister to their need, you would lift them up and remove the burden from their shoulders and help them to know that your yoke is easy and that they can trust in you and trust in you to bring, us, bring all of us through our darkest times. Father, help us to know that in your appointments we are blessed and in your appointments we have nothing to fear. For we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ has told us in the book of Mark, that you did, and you received that stuff into your own life. church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. To the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of God's people, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For fully, pray, Chuck, our bishops, for cast in light, and all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregations, especially Jonathan Richard. And Emmanuel Reformed Episcopal Church in Bikersville, and Canon William Jenkins and Faith Church in Baltimore. Lord, in your mercy. For missionaries and all who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, for the Reformed Episcopal Seminary and the Atlantic City Rescue Mission, Lord, in your mercy. For our family in Christ who are persecuted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially for President Joe Biden, grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, 
and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for Volkmeyer Zelensky and the people of the Ukraine, repentance in the nation of Russia, Doris, Maria, Colleen Coleman, Jean, Tony, Al, Dominic, Marion Petrona, Destiny, George, Cat, Larry and Debbie, Rosemary, Margaret, Crystal, Ashton, Josh, Chris, McQuaid, and Kazarasa's families, the residents of Florida, and the Episcopal election in our time. Lord, in your mercy. For the armed forces of our nation, all policemen and law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, health care workers, and all who put their lives on the line for us and our families' health and safety. Lord, in your mercy. For Ron, Dan, and all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of a resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us examine our hearts and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, saying, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, we acknowledge and we deeply mourn our many sins and witnesses, which we from time to time most graciously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our many sins. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all the past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you, our Lord Father, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of us great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all of those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here were comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul says, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very good, right, and our required duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Amen. Therefore, the angels of our kingdoms, and of all of the company of heaven, we pray for the night God, your glorious name, ever more praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of God, and of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
in our own ways. But you are not full of great mercies. We are not worthy so much as we gather up the crumbs of the great table. But you are the same Lord, whose character is always full of mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his suffering, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell with him. And he in us. Amen. All glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, offering, and complete payment for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father, we most humbly beg you, and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, forgiven for you, preserve your bodies and souls unto everlasting. 
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you for the sake of the
Now our Savior Christ has taught us to the top of page 7. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, for our holy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And we forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us our trespasses. Servants earnestly desire your fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly begging you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you, humbly begging you that we and all partakers of the Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us as we in him. And although we are unworthy for our many sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, Yet we beg you to accept this, our required duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank you. Jesus Christ, goodness towards us, and the body of the most perfect, the company of all faithful people. And for all heirs of the most everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of the Son, and the most holy day of the Lord of the Lord, so we will accept the pure grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and you will be in all the world. Be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our special hymn is number 581. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each of the possessing and redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Praise be given in adoration for the gospel song. Faithful, ever her faithful, may we be found. Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.